Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by Trevor Marshall of Troy Baseball. How's it going? Good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So um, uh, let just talk about the, like th- this past season and how, how things have gone for, for, for you guys this year. So this past season was really good. It was probably the best Troy team we've ever had. I think we were second in the win column ever at Troy. I mean, we surprised a lot of people. I feel like every out of league game since we were put in the blue, which wasn't the best by any means with the competition. There were some still some pretty good teams in there, but the bottom teams was not what you'd expect to be playing. But all of our out of league games, I mean, it was West Bloomfield, Brother Rice, all those top teams because we want our thing at Troy. What we kind of went by is to be the best. You got to beat the best. So we really focus with those out of league games to kind of go crush it and see what we can do. And I mean, I think we held our own and I think we showed why end of the season, we made some noise in the rankings with PBR and cold weather bats. I mean, the postseason didn't go how we wanted losing to uh, Birmingham Seaholm in the district final, but that's baseball. They had a good squad. They made a good run, ended up losing to Rice. But I think there's a lot of unfinished business at our school and I think we're ready we still have a really good core coming back we're losing a couple really good seniors John Whiteside and Clark Anderson who are going to LCC they're gonna go be really really good I feel like for them and moving forward but I think we have a really good foundation coming back with our 25s but also our 26s so our upcoming juniors Jack Sabaka and then Gabe Geisner our catcher who's going to play in the future games at PBR I think people need to be out of out on the lookout for him but i think i think we have a good squad coming back and we can make some noise yeah okay so you're primarily on the mound so yeah so kind of talk about like you know all the all the pitches you throw what do you feel like you're what do you feel like is your best one and stuff so right now i got a four seam fastball that runs a lot i have a lot of arm side run which i think that helps me a lot miss barrels so i throw from a three-quarter slot and then i also got a change up and a curveball which both of them I can either throw for strikes or for chase pitches. My big thing is on the mound, I got to attack. I got I can't be saying, oh, what's the batter going to do? It's me. Okay, how am I going to get this guy out? What am I going to do? How can this first, first pitch dictate the last pitch to set him up for a swing and miss or a ground out? So I'm very – I like to kind of play mind games on the mound a little bit, like keep him guessing because I'll pitch you backwards. I'll do I'll do whatever it takes to get him out, so – yeah. So I think going into, you know, this season, I know, um, you know, outside of that, like, you know, pit, you know, coming on, uh, you know, being on an up and coming team and all that. And, you know, how big was that for you to kind of just like, you know, you know, gain confidence and all that stuff when you're, whenever you're on the mound? I mean, I think with me, you're saying with me committing. Yeah. With me committing to Western, I think it's really big for my confidence too because then I also kind of don't have that stress of like, even in my last outing in summer, like, oh, is there going to be a coach here watching me? Like emails I got to send. I think now it's, okay, let's just relax and let's just go play baseball and work hard. Yeah. And I think that'll take a lot of stress off of it. Like, let's go have fun and win some ball games. And I think it'll really help my confidence knowing, hey, this is who I am and let's go to work. Like I've always had that mindset. Like, I know what I can do and I know what my team can do to have that confidence of let's do it. But I think this will, will really help me like understand who I am. And I'm not one to fear from anybody. I like, I've even said, I don't care if the Detroit Tigers are hitting against me, I'm going to do what I can do. Like I gotta, yeah, I feel like part of your success is yes, you're going to go up against really, really good competition, especially like the brother Ices, the West Bloomfields, those types of schools. But you also got to know, like, I feel like in my position, okay, I am committed and I know what I can do. Like, I know my game. So I think that's the big thing for me is trust in myself. Yeah. Okay. So you just mentioned it and it's, so you, you just committed to Western this week yeah. to continue your baseball career. Um, um, What really went into that decision? Like, why? So for me, since I've been on campus, what was that now? Not this past summer, but now two summers ago, like, in August, heading into my sophomore year, I went out there for a show for a showcase to go play in front of the coaches. Didn't have my best outing. I mean, I was a sophomore, so I wasn't really looking anything into it. And then this past sophomore, I went back in August and I threw really, really well. 
the coaches liked me a lot. As for my schedule, Coach Gernan and Coach Me are great. I love those guys. I know when I get though they're they're gonna have my back. I love those guys to death. Like I know that's where I want to be. Like school, campus wise, baseball. I mean, they just won the MAC. Like that's that's huge for me, especially to say, okay, I know I'm going to an established program that can, knows how to win baseball games with a great culture. I think that's another thing is there it's working hard, leaving a legacy and winning baseball games. And I'm like, that's, that's what I want to be a part of is that grittiness, winning ball games. It doesn't matter how, like working hard, getting up at 4 a.m. to bust my butt. Like I'm really excited to be a Bronco. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Um, so of course, you know, now that everything's out of the way and all that stuff, like what's this summer going to be looking like now, obviously with, um, you know, now with your future Ben de- has been decided and all that. So. so thankfully no more college showcases or anything running around, but then I got a lot, uh, tournaments every week and I play for the South Oakland A's with Greg Fettis. Got a lot of our teams committed to like, we have three LCC guys on the team, a couple other guys going to some D3. So it's, it's really exciting because we have a really good squad. We're not playing our best ball right now, but it's baseball last year. We had a really good year, but I think we know what we got to do to have a great summer and just wake up because we, we are a team that can, especially after last year, we had four losses. Mm-hmm. And right now we're in a really rough start, but the good thing is our team knows how to come back from that because we know how to win. And it's like, all right, what do we have to do? So it's, it's going to be fun. So I'm looking at that. And then, don't really know what I'm doing in August. I might just take a break, let the arm rest, let the body rest up for a month or t- for two months, and then get back after it in the off season. So, okay. So when you're on the mound, let's let's get into let's get into let's get in your head a little bit, Trevor. Let's do it. Um, okay. So like right before, do you uh, pitchers? I know tend to you know separate themselves and you know, go in the, go in their own headspace a little bit. Is that kind of what you do before you? Yeah. For some of my guys call me JJ McCarthy sometimes, cause I'm, I'm a big meditator before I pitch. Okay. Every outing it's, I go sit in the bullpen, 10 minutes of meditation with my headphones in some white noise and just kind of, kind of helps me relax. If there's any stress outside from outside of baseball that day, I just kind of just zones me in and it's like, let's get to work. And when I step in between those lines, it's like nothing else matters to me. It's just, all right, let's attack. Because I don't think having distractions is good. I mean, that's obvious because if you have anything else on your mind when you are within those white baselines, it's not going to be a good day for you if you're thinking about other things that happened. So that's my really thing is focusing in, zoning in, like staying locked in, having that tunnel vision. So, so, um, what do you feel like your best moment of the season was uh, last year? Ooh, there were a couple of good ones. I'm trying to think. There was one, my first start against Clarkston was really good. We swept Clarkston in a doubleheader. And it was pretty cool because me and uh, John Whiteside both went five innings. He went uh, game two, I went game one. Both had eight strikeouts. That was a fun day. That happened a couple of times in those doubleheaders where me and him were really a one, two punch and we just rolled. And I've been playing with John for forever. And it's been awesome for both of us to grow, be committed, him going to LCC this next fall and kind of have those moments with him. And I think another moment is just, this was uh, our coach Durazio's first varsity season. And so freshman year, I played with him on JV and then played on varsity as a sophomore last year. And now as a junior, uh, played varsity, of course, and it was kind of cool to have him there. And when we got our 30th win, that was pretty cool. I mean, I think also our first one of the season with him dumped him with water, like, hey, like, welcome to varsity, kind of. I think that was cool. I mean, another big thing for me is I think some of the good moments were even when I, sh- when I would have a bad inning, and it's you could really see how much of a family our team was by supporting each other. I think that was actually – that was pretty cool, just saying, hey, we got your back, like – that's big for me. Yeah. Um, and also what's the biggest thing like you're going to, that you're going to take away from everything. From Troy baseball, the biggest thing I'll take away is probably just. Like from the season, I mean. Oh, from the season. Uh, probably showing that Troy high baseball can make some noise because Troy baseball has never really been a like baseball school. Cause 
we, I mean, we don't have a lot of guys go play college ball. It'll be one or two here, there, sometimes a smaller school, but we had Austin Cicerone last year at Saginaw. And then we had John Birdie a while ago. He plays for the Yankees. Now he went to Bowling Green. I mean, I think the big thing is we showed people and kind of woke the state up in the region up a little bit like, Hey, maybe we can do something. And I think there might be a little bit of expectation on us, but I don't think that's nothing we can't handle. Okay. All right. Let's get to know you a little bit. How about that? Let's do it. Um, what, Okay, so I must ask, like, sunflower seeds or gum, what you got in the dugout? I mean, I'm I'm a big sunflower seed guy. I'll, I'll chew gum here and there, but I'm a big sunflower seed guy. I mean, I probably, especially being a PO, I'm on the, I'm only pitching once a week. So I'm, I'm probably running through a bag or two of seeds a week, which is probably not the best for me, but big taco guy. Taco yeah. seeds or bacon seeds, those are the go-to. Okay, what's, uh, what's Trevor listening to before a game? You know, it depends. Some days it'll be country or some days it'll be Eminem. I'm a big Eminem guy. And then, or like Lil Baby, just in the rap. I got a whole playlist. I mean, it's either that or it's country. It's usually the rap before the game. Yeah. Um. What is um hmm, a favorite player currently right now? Right now, probably Tarek Scooble. I try to, I try to model my game kind of after him the past couple of years too. He has this interview with Pitching Ninja. I don't know if you know who that is, the pitching ninja. He's no, no, no a big uh, baseball pitcher guy, looks into the pro stuff, really good like with analytics and numbers. And there's this interview he does with Scooble about his pitch grips and everything, and I watch it every night before the day I start because that's who I want to model my game after, kind of be like, hey, like this is where I want to be. I mean, the man's throwing 102 right now. like that's, And especially being a lefty, that's who I want to model my game after, kind of. So I think that he's he's probably my favorite right now. All right, what is uh what's what's your go to place for food? Ooh, probably Chipotle. That's it's Chipotle or Panda Express. Um, and then finally, what is something people do not know about you? A lot of people don't know actually that I was born three months early. I was two pounds when I, I was two pounds when I was born. To now be almost six foot and healthy and going to play college baseball is quite an accomplishment. Yeah. All right. Well, um, uh, well, Trevor, thanks so much for the time as always. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was a pleasure.